We're getting a service call on this RTAA and it was tripping on a compressor saturation temp whenever it went into a startup. And we kind of dealt with this a little bit last year and it was something we were trying to work through and work towards and see what was going on. So we're coming back around to our cooling season again and they're having some morning startups where they needed it. And the, uh, we had put a Seagam chiller in on this building and so forth. And anyway, so it's pretty interesting whenever we went to try to start the troubleshoot on this, trying to figure out exactly why it was because we had recently replaced this compressor about a, actually, I guess it's been about two years ago now and it's been working mostly okay. We've had a few issues. One of the problems we had was the EEV was constantly having a failure, ended up being a module in the control panel. But during all that time frame, we had replaced the suction saturation sensor and the suction sensor on the bottom of the compressor. So this sensor was new, this EEV is new, and our suction sensor down here is new. So the customer was saying that when it went to start up, uh, usually first thing in the morning, it was having trouble tripping out. And it would trigger that alarm, he could reset it a few times, and eventually uh, he could get it to run for a more extended period of time. There's a handful of conditions it could be whenever you're looking at that. A lot of times, if the EEV is having issues, that could have something to do with it. Because then if the EEV is under feeding and it's not uh, opening properly, that can cause a lot of your problem. Another symptom could be if the suction saturation sensor, which is reading literal refrigerant saturation temperature. It's something that a lot of people don't realize. These machines don't have transducers. They're taking actual refrigerant temps and then converting that over into a pressure. So the pressure you see on the control panel that's all it is. Uh, we did check that and that was actually right on par. It was within like one degree, but the suction temperature sensor, which is coming into the back of the compressor, that was right at three degrees. Now that one's a little more obscure because uh, it's actually reading right there off of the motor and we got a lot of this piping in the way and it's not so straightforward getting a comparative temp. So I can give a little more leeway on that one, but typically two degrees is about all we usually want to allow in terms of deferential. And and that should be pretty close to that. Typically that's, that's within a two degree span. This particular time it was three, but it was three degrees high. And so typically that would mean we wanna feed more refrigerant, not less. So I would probably run the valve a little more open than I probably have to with that sensor reading slightly high in its calibration. So the next thought goes to, okay, are we dealing with uh, maybe an unloading issue? So that's something I've had in the past where the unloader, if it's, uh, if it's not able to stage properly, uh, whether whether it be the slide is sticking or the unloader coils are having problems, something along those lines, maybe that's got something to do with it. And this compressor did have, it had a weird wiring issue on the unloaders we found when we changed it out. Now we didn't immediately notice it uh, whenever we uh, did the re replacement. So we, once we got it back in, we went to start it up, we noticed it was not loading right and it was just acting really funny. So that's when we uh, dug into that, found it, fixed it. So I didn't, uh, and, and looking at it, I don't have, it, it's still fine like the the loading wiring still looks good the control module still outputting properly and so we were able to rule that out just based off of that but it doesn't mean that's all the story so if our temperature sensors are on point we know our GPM on the chiller is good once we get it started up and we get everything to where it's able to run it's doing okay like it's not having any dramatic or major issues so that's when the question became, okay, what does our oil look like? So if you don't know, these compressors uh, utilize the oil system to help push the, uh, push the compressor's uh, slide so that it can load and unload properly. So part of what started to lead us down the oil path is we got it started up and we got it to stabilize and it wasn't loading past, what was it, 85, or it was just right at 90% is what it was. It couldn't load past that. Now, typically for these machines, they're able to load up to you know well over a hundred percent of their load and that we could hear the loader clicking and firing and it, it just it wasn't getting there and it needed to get a little more capacity in the compressor because circuit two is down and even if it wasn't down we could lock it out to where we strictly load up circuit one so as we're trying to load it it just it stalls out and it won't go any further so that's like okay well what's our oil looking like because our if our oil is having trouble then that we're not going to be able to load properly in that 
that slide's not going to be able to actuate the way it's meant to. And you could also hear this little bit of a kind of a hiccup in the compressor. It almost sounded like the compressor bearings every once in a while. So we checked the oil temperature. The oil temperature was, uh, we were at starting off at around uh, eight degrees above condenser saturation. And then as it ran and tried to stage up, it would start to slowly climb. Now, when you start getting a uh, low oil, you will start to run an elevated oil temperature. So the longer it ran, the more it would slowly climb, but granted it would still top out somewhere around 130, 140 was the upper end of what we would see. And it would take several minutes to get there. So that didn't really indicate an obvious oil issue because the safety trip point on that part of the manual should be around 170 degrees. Just because our oil temperature wasn't having a problem didn't mean that we weren't having an oil level issue. It didn't mean we were still fine on oil. We just it wasn't as obvious as that because of where the temperatures were. So technically we were within our tolerances there. And typically if you're having an oil restriction, the uh, incoming temperature at the compressor will actually be low. And that's where the trip point is for that is if you're four degrees lower than condenser saturation, then that's uh, the system's gonna see that as a oil restriction. Whereas a low oil or oil loss is gonna be a higher or more elevated oil temperature. So this led us to needing to check our actual oil level on this separator. Now I tried to do that through my thermal imager because typically what I've seen with that is the oil levels in here will be at, a, at just enough of a temperature difference that your imager will be able to see a separation between what is the actual discharge refrigerant and the uh, solid liquid level of the oil column in this cylinder. Now I do want to say appreciation to Top Don for sending over this uh, thermal imager. I've had it for actually quite some time. I've They've asked me to do something on it for a while now. I haven't had time to really get around to it. So, But honestly, it's a fairly uh, inexpensive one on the market. I think you can get them through Amazon, but it's actually, it's been great. It's the temperatures have been very accurate. It's worked well. It's not perfect. The software for the phone, it is very convenient. It works like it's supposed to. Uh, sure, you could probably get a better quality one on the market, but you're going to spend a lot more for it. This one, I think are le they're at or less than 200 bucks or somewhere in there. So in my opinion, what would be very affordable for most guys, and I could definitely recommend this one as a, as a good uh, entry level option if you needed a thermal imaging camera. They did not sponsor this in any way. All they did was provide the tool and I just told them I'd talk about it whenever I got ready. So in doing that temperature check, I just, I wasn't seeing the separation like I expected. Uh, and that was very strange to me and it made me worried that we didn't have enough oil in here. So the very next thing we did, and it's not the, it's not the correct way to do it, but with it still running, we went ahead and hooked up to the, uh, to the system. And I, and whenever you're doing a level check like this, so if you don't know what, uh, what I'm holding in my hand, I've got a sight glass here and this sight glass is connected to uh, the discharge side and then the bottom of the oil sump on the service port and we're able to see our actual oil level by doing it this way because part of what happens is the the heavy oil collects in the bottom and then the vapor comes up top and then we can kind of move this up and down and eventually we get our actual oil level now with this running and that's one of the drawbacks to this particular series the discharge port so low that it can kind of be a little finicky trying to do this but theoretically the discharge pressure here and the pressure on this cylinder should be all almost perfectly identical. So whenever we hooked it up with it online, just to see what it was first, and again, I, I'm not recommending you do it that way, just explaining what we did. Uh, we ended up running to where, yeah, we had almost no oil in here, which corresponded with my thermal imaging camera and what I would have expected to see. So the very next thing we did is we went ahead, we had the building swap over to the chillers and we let this one shut down. And uh, the manual states that after it's had about 30 minutes of runtime, you shut it down, give it about five minutes or so, and then you can check your actual level. And part of what we did was uh, from there, once the system pressures equalized, we disconnected from the actual discharge port here and moved up to the liquid line port so that we had a higher elevation to take the reading from and it would allow the sight glass to work a lot more smoothly. And one of the things you have to be careful with is if you get a dip in it like this, this can kind of create an airlock scenario. So you want to make sure that you keep your hose uh, elevated as possible uh, above where your sight glass is so you don't create any kind of a weird spot. And in doing that, we ended up finding that 
our actual liquid le or oil level is only about three inches up into this uh, cylinder and or the oil separator is what it is. I keep calling it a cylinder, but so this separator is uh, supposed to be five to 10 inches from the base of the separator and we're only three inches. So that confirmed that we have an oil, a low oil level situation. So it is very likely that the oil level being low like this is affecting our slide's ability to move. So if we can't control the oil on the slide properly, we're not gonna load and unload the compressor properly and that's going to lead to uh, it having issues with the, the suction saturation temperature dropping out and part of my theory because this compressor when it first starts up is only getting down to about 60 percent of its total um, capacity typically you see these get uh, start off somewhere in the in the 40 maybe 50 percent range and then load up from there so i'm very suspicious that because our uh, oil level is low that it's not allowing the compressor to unload the way it was intended to and that is leading to it being overstaged at startup and eventually uh, it's it's able to pull the refrigerant at too high of a rate of speed which ends up causing the uh, the barrel to run too dry for too long and then we trip out on the low suction saturation from here we're gonna get them some oil we'll get it charged up and uh, for, uh, we'll also verify our diagnosis uh, I'm very confident once we get all this going we'll be fine they'll be good to go and there'll be another happy customer happy service service call. Appreciate everybody. Hope this helps. Just a real quick, nice, hot, dirty, uh, kind of I'll walk you through the call, let you know what happened, but at the same time, give you some interesting details, stuff we don't talk about all the time. Try to make it a little more focused instead of just a random follow along, some kind of crazy storyline. Just uh, let me give you the hot, dirty, sweet grit. Everyone look at that. I don't know. I'm just talking. I'll see you later. MTT.